I think one of the beautiful things about your testimony is that the, the world kind of tells guys who experience this, oh no, if, if you go down the road to the church, that's telling you like, you can't love men. You're not allowed to love men. And, and that goes contrary to our very nature because we're created, you know, by love, in love, for love. But what's happened is as you've grown in this virtue of chastity, your capacity to love men has only exponentially increased that now yeah. it's gotten to the level of, of a deep sacrificial pure love through your witness of purity and faith and courage. You know, you're loving more men, you know, more radically in your life now than you were five years ago, following the worldly example of what love is supposed to be. And I think it's all because of your embrace of the cross. But I think mm. we're all, the temptation is to find a Christianity without the cross of just yeah. like, okay, I'm all in as long as I don't have to die. Now I'm mm. all, you know, I'm all about God as long as I don't have to carry one of those big wooden things, you know, because, <laughs> you know, if I could just find that sweet Jesus who loves me, who isn't going to tell me to come and die, because right. I think if for every one of us, it's different. You know, I mean, for some people, it might be your singleness and it's like, Hey, I just want to get married and I can't find the right person. And why do I have to keep waiting on God? Why can't I just grasp or, you know, who knows? I mean, everybody it's different, you know, but I think for each of us, he has hand selected a cross that becomes your path to heaven. And Amen. that's why the devil is so obsessed with getting us to run from the cross because mm. he knows that that is the highway to sanctity. And, and he wants us to despise it, to fear it and, and to flee it. Because if we take that up, not only does it become our path to sainthood, it, it paves a way for so many, a highway, so to speak, to follow. And so, uh, you know, maybe just speak to that in closing of, of just the gift of the cross of this whole thing of this time where it felt like, I feel like I'm a mess. My attractions are a mess. This whole thing's a mess, you know, but where God is meeting you in the middle of all that. Yeah. Amen. Um, ultimately I think, you know, kind of, as you were saying, the cross is the bridge to heaven. Like it, it truly is. And there's such a danger of, taking the cross away that it's, it's so important to focus on the resurrection and the joy and the beauty of the resurrection. But we have to also remember that Jesus made it very clear in uh, sacred scripture that to follow him, it's not going to be easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus. He was crucified and it's not going to be easy for us. Um, and the cross for me, at least, um, the cross of same sex attraction and also the cross of, you know, so many other things that I have to carry in my life. Cause this isn't the only cross that I carry. Like, it's not like I just, you know, attracted men that say like, I struggle with a lot of things. I'm human. Um, and I'm, I'm still very broken. I have a lot of sanctification to go. Um, but I think the cross has really forced me um, to just lean on the Lord, the one who is on the cross, that it has forced me to humble myself and realize that I cannot do this alone. Um, I will never be able to do this alone. I need the Lord. And it forces me in my times of struggle and my times of need um, my times of desolation, also my times of glory to just make Jesus not only my savior, but my friend, someone that I can go to just talk to about like, hey, Lord, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Listen to me, hear me, um, help me. Um, it's really forced me to just have a very vulnerable, raw, intimate relationship with the Lord. That's not, you know, um, just a set of prayers that I recite or just, a, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like I'm able to just go into the chapel and just like in the most vulnerable raw way, just laid out to Lord that like, Jesus, Hey friend, this is what's going on in my life. I need your help. Like help me with this Lord, help me carry my cross. Cause like I tell people all the time, like even Jesus in sacred scripture, like he didn't carry his cross alone. Like I, and I firmly believe that the Lord, like Simon of Serene came in and that we have that image. We have that because the Lord wanted to emphasize that of like, that we are not meant to carry across cross alone, no matter what cross you're carrying, whether it's same sex attraction, um, just any struggles, you know, pornography addiction, eating disorder, whatever. Like at the end of the day, we all have a cross to carry. You are not a human being if you do not have something that you're struggling with. And Jesus wants to carry that cross with you. He wants to pick up that wood with you. He wants to be your Simon of Serene. He wants to follow you and walk every step with you. And um, that is what I think the cross has ultimately been for me. And that's why it's been so freeing is through that I've been able to experience the resurrection through the cross um, through laying uh, my everything down at the foot of the cross, the Lord has shared with me that resurrection. And what's so exciting is that it's only been glimpses too, that I know there's such a greater resurrection to come in the next life as well, that I cannot wait, um, hopefully, to experience with the Lord. Um, yeah, and it's, it, it's funny because it's so contradicting to what the world tells us that you would think that if you like a lot of people see a life like mine, there's like, you are so like 
you're being, you're suppressing your feelings. You're so repressed. You're so like, you're being held back from the freedom that you could have, you could attain. And that's what I think is so beautiful, especially with my life by the grace of God. It's like, I had a taste of that. You know, I, I had a taste of what the world has to offer. And I'm like, it's so fleeing compared to what the cross and the world has, I, what the cross and the Lord has to offer. Um, and just being able to just witness to that of like, Jesus has so much better to offer. He's everything. Uh, we were created for him and we will be, you will never find rest until you're at rest with him at the foot of the cross. Um, yeah. The image that came to mind to me as you were speaking is the, the image of the yoke in scripture, you know, where Christ mm. says, you know, come to me, yep. all you who are weary and find life burdensome, burdensome, and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I've seen images of the yoke. You know, the yoke is that piece of wood that they put over the, the shoulders around the heads of oxen, you know, to plow the fields. And typically in the yoke, there will actually be two circles for where the, the, the oxen put their head through. One will be mm. a larger one for the more trained, experienced oxen. And then there's a smaller one for where they train the younger one. And so the two oxen go in there together and the bigger one does the load of the work, you know, but the other one learns how to do it alongside. And so that's the mm. image that Christ is giving. And, you know, for an agricultural culture that that was thousands of years ago, the people would have seen it right away. Okay, my yoke, take my yoke on you. Meaning, okay, I'm going to, if you're walking alongside of me, then it will be lighter. You're not mm. meant to carry this whole thing without me beside you. But if, if you're in this thing with me, we can get this done together. And so Manny, I can't thank you enough for your courage, your witness, your testimony. How can people uh, get a hold of you, whether it's your, you know, your, your blogs, your YouTube, you know, how can people connect and see this good stuff that you're doing for the church? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so you can find me um, on various social media platforms on Instagram. My handle is at call me Manny. Uh, but the Manny has two Y's at the end. So it's three Y's total. Um, and actually on my Instagram bio, you have uh, my entire link tree where you can find my blog site. What a beautiful cross. Um, I have a YouTube channel that is just under my uh, name, Emmanuel Gonzalez. Um, I also have various resources. I've done blogs for, like I said, Courage National, all kinds of different websites. Um, I've given numerous talks as well. Um, different videos, resources that you can find that will all be on my blog site as well that I can link. Um, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much. And then I also hopefully sooner than later as well, we'll have a podcast out on Spotify with Avera Maria Santo, who's a dear friend of mine who also speaks on the topic. Um, so stay tuned for that. But yes, the main place that you can find me is I'm very active right now on my Instagram and my Twitter account, but I am also posting blogs and various um, just resources throughout my What a Beautiful Cross website as well. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message, and there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day, and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at Patreon dot com slash Jason Everett that helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.